Hello, virtual learners. I'm back with more procedural writing. This is lesson number five. We are going to take what we started yesterday. So you'll remember yesterday you selected something from your circle map, something that you know how to do. I chose how to do laundry. You're choosing something else. We took this and we transferred it onto our how-to paper. You had your name, the date, the title, teaching someone what you were going to do, and then we started with our introduction. Our introductions always start with the same words. I am going to teach you. Again, I am going to teach you. And then we copied our title. Now, I'm teaching someone how to do laundry. The first thing I want to do today is I want to add my next date. I'm just going to put it tiny under here. I'm working on this paper again, so I'm going to put the date on here again to remind me, oh yeah, it wasn't just one day. Sometimes these things take a lot of days. My first job today is to think about the steps for doing laundry. Now, here's what I was thinking. I was thinking I know a lot of steps for doing laundry. Watch this. Ready? I know I can gather all the clothes, sort the clothes out, uh, put them in piles on the laundry room floor, put them inside of the washer, close the washer door, add some soap, wait for, or push the buttons to start it, wait for the ding, move the clothes into the dryer, take out any clothes that need to be hung up. Oh my word, I'm not even finished and I have so many steps. I've got to shrink it down. I'm not going to tell every single little step of my how-to I'm going to focus just on the big things. Now, the first thing I told you last week was we don't want to tell anyone to get anything. We're going to assume, that means make a smart guess, we're going to assume that they already have what they need close to them. So if you are teaching someone how to draw a person, for example, you don't need to tell them get paper, get markers. You don't need to do that. We're going to assume that they have what they need already. Instead, I'm just going to think, what are the big steps that I need to teach someone? I'm going to try to see if I can keep this into five steps or less. So I'm not going to tell someone to go and get the clothes. I'm just going to tell them to put the clothes in the washer. So I'm going to draw a washing machine. Now you guys know my art is not spectacular, but I am going to try my best. I'm going to have the door to the washer open and then my washer, you load clothes into the front. Sometimes people have washers that you load into the top. Either way, this is my washer and I'm going to show some clothes inside of them, just like that, okay? So that's my first thing I would tell someone was to put clothes inside of the washer. The next thing you have to do is you have to add the soap. I'm not gonna tell them all of the steps like uh, make sure that the clothes can be washed together. No, I just wanna think about the really big steps. And the big step is to add the soap. Now I buy my soap for the laundry in a great big tub. It has a little handle like this at the top. So this, and I'm even going to add a little label on the front of it so people would know this is the, and I'll even put soap. That's not what the label says, but people would get a good idea from that, that that's the soap. The next thing that I have to do is I have to, when it's all finished in the washer, well, I wait for a ding sound. So I'm going to show my washer again because it takes a little while for it to do its job, right? Better show over here is kind of where the buttons are. And then I'm going to have it go ding. Ding is the noise that my washer makes when it's done. Other people's washers are different. Some of them don't make noises. So after it makes the ding, then I have to move the clothes up into the dryer. Now for me, my washer and my dryer are stacked up. I think a lot of people have theirs next to each other. I kind of miss my washer and dryer that were next to each other. Now, I'm going to show this one open, and we're ready to move those clothes up to the dryer. So this would be showing how you have to move things from the washer to the dryer. And then my last step, you take the clothes out of the dryer, and then you fold them. So I'm going to show the dryer again. But I'm going to show, usually I have my laundry basket right here on the last step, and I put my laundry inside of my laundry basket. So I'll also show some clothes in there, some clothes in here. You know what? I better go back and show, like, this is like the clothes in here. Up here, I'm having some clothes in here and some clothes in here. Okay, I'm going to check over my pictures now and see, does this make sense? Are these the steps? Let's see. To do laundry, first I put the clothes in the washer, then I add the soap, I wait for a ding to know it's finished, I move the clothes from the washer to the dryer. And then the last thing I do is I take the clothes out of the dryer because they're all clean. 
You guys, this is one of the hardest parts of writing a how-to, is deciding what are good steps. What is it that you want people to do? And I can't do all of the little steps. I just have to focus on those really big things. So today, what I want you to do, I want you to get out your same paper that we used yesterday. I want you to think whatever it is that you're teaching someone how to do, I want you to think about the big steps. You might need a little bit of help from a grown-up with this to decide, is it a big step? Is it a little step? Would it be okay if I'm teaching someone how to draw a person if in step one I just say, draw a person? No, I have to break it down like make a head, make a body, um, add the feet and arms. I'm going to break it into little steps, but I'm not going to make the two steps too little, like add one eye, add another eye, add a nose, add the ears, add the mouth. That would just be too much. So today, your job is to take your how-to paper. I want you to draw the steps. Maybe you don't need all five steps. That happens to me sometimes. I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't need that. I only need to draw three pictures. That's okay. But I want you to make sure you have at least three steps and no more than five for your how-to. Get it, got it good? Awesome. Go get that work done. I'll see you tomorrow.